Body Dysmorphic Disorder. What is BDD? How does it work? And how can you recover? BDD, also known as body dysmorphia, is a self-perpetuating disorder surrounding the sufferer's perception of one or more parts of their body. BDD shares close links with OCD and other obsessive compulsive disorders. In these videos you'll learn how BDD works and self-perpetuates, how the obsessive compulsive cycle operates, and perhaps most importantly, how to successfully recover. There's a lot of high quality pioneering information within these videos. However, if you're just window shopping or looking for a magic pill to take, this information probably isn't for you. But if you're fed up with BDD and are genuinely looking for a way to overcome it, investing 15 or 20 minutes of your life taking in this information will pay you huge dividends over the long term. Today could well be the turning point for you if you're willing to take the time to help yourself. Where does BDD come from? BDD can start in one of two ways. The most common tends to be an emotionally charged experience where embarrassment or shame become associated to a given body part. This can take the form of a one-off experience or a collection of subsequent experiences such as bullying. Alternatively, BDD can manifest very gradually through an initially low level of dissatisfaction with a given body part. Repeated attention and compounded negative emotional responses gradually build with each cycle. At a given point, what was a relatively harmless habit gives way and becomes a fully blown obsessive compulsive anxiety disorder. The transition from harmless habit to disorder can occur suddenly, which is very noticeable, or over time as an almost imperceptible shift. From a recovery perspective, how your BDD developed is far less important than how it is maintained. We've just included this information for the sake of consistency. As we progress, you begin to understand what drives your BDD and how you can change it. Where do the BDD obsessive thoughts come from? If you are a BDD sufferer, you don't need us to tell you about how often you obsessively think about and pay attention to your troublesome body part. However, wouldn't it be true to say that you don't choose to repeatedly think about the body part? It's as though the thoughts just pop into your head from nowhere, right? So, if you're not asking for these repetitive, obsessive thoughts to come into your head, where do they come from and why? Most people consider their mind, the brain, to be who they are. However, this isn't as true as these people would like to believe. Let's run through a quick exercise to prove our point. In a moment, we'd like you to close your eyes and have no thoughts for one minute. So prepare yourself now to have no thoughts. That's pictures or internal talk in your head for the next 60 seconds. If you're going to try the exercise, pause the video and do it now. If you didn't bother with the exercise, as most people won't, you probably already decided that you couldn't possibly go for a whole minute without having any thoughts. If you did the exercise, well done. However, you will almost certainly have found pictures or dialogue appeared in your head, regardless of you asking them not to. So what's going on here? If you can't tell your thoughts to shut up, who's running the show? The brain is responsible for at least four things. It controls the automated stuff in your body, heartbeat, blood pressure, temperature regulation, etc. It generates thoughts and files information. It generates your emotional states and your feelings. And it creates your conscious awareness. Let's pay attention to the part that deals with thought generation for now. So let's say, for argument's sake, that the brain is a thought generator. How does it know what thoughts to generate? In order to understand how the brain decides what thoughts to bring to your attention, we first need to understand how we differentiate between what is important and what is unimportant. Here are two brief scenarios for you to consider. The first one. You notice a charity collection bag has been pushed through your letterbox. You should really sort out some of your old clothes and give them away. But you'll get around to it some other time. That's scenario number two. You get a phone call late at night telling you that your best friend has been involved in a serious car accident. They are alive but badly injured. There's no visiting permitted, so you'll have to wait for further information by phone. So... Which of the 
two scenarios would you consider to be important? Well, the second one, of course. But how do you know it's important? What happens to let you know this is important? The answer is really simple. You get an emotional response when something is important. The more intense the emotional response, the more important we consider it to be. The mind uses these emotional responses as a sort of gauge to decide not only what is important, but also what to retain in terms of memory. If a situation or thought process is unimportant or mundane, there is no emotional response. The brain considers it to be unimportant and discards it. Have you ever wondered why it's so hard to remember boring stuff? If a situation or thought process elicits a mild emotional response, the brain considers it may be worthwhile keeping, just in case, so it files the information deep inside your mind. However, if a situation or thought process elicits a strong or intense emotional response, your brain considers it important and files it right at the top of your thought filing cabinet. As mentioned earlier, the brain is a thought generator, so where do you think it looks for thoughts to bring to your attention? It goes to the top of your thought filing cabinet, of course. So, when you're not really focused on anything in particular, your mind pops an unsolicited thought from your filing cabinet into your conscious awareness. That's its job. However, what you do with that thought process can have dire consequences, as you'll learn in the next video. How the BDD cycle self-perpetuates.